good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to our channel, It's a Trap. So earlier today, I made a video about uh, cephalotus propagation and repotting. And it is on uh, Tagalog. That's why one of our friends, uh, Katin D, asking if, uh, when we will gonna upload the English version. So now, uh, we'll make it on English so that uh, everybody can understand. So, uh, hopefully, uh, I can share to you how I uh, refat and propagate my Cephalotus uh, Follicularis. So, I will make it a little bit shorter than the previous version because uh, uh, most of the points that uh, we made is uh, you can watch it just by uh, watching the video and not listening to what I'm talking about. But... Uh, uh, what we discussed earlier today is about uh, how can we avoid uh, root rot on uh, cephalotus pedicularis or also known as the sudden death. So what's the, the points that uh, you need to, uh, to remember when taking care of cephalotus especially if you are on uh, you're living on the tropical uh, climate like uh, what we have here is avoid the uh, overwatering or uh, water lag uh, condition and uh, also avoid uh, too much uh, high temperature because there's a chance that you will burn it and of course it will if it will if it will dry out it will rot it can rot easily and also we need to uh, remember to uh, always look on a small uh, uh, insect that can bring or uh, can uh, uh, give us uh, some problem in the future like for example if there's a lot of uh, uh, ants in the area where you put your uh, uh, cephalotus pedicularis pot oh, those ants can bring you uh, powdery mildew and uh, it, that's one of the common problem if you we have a cephalotus and other carnivorous plant uh, the, the thing that we are doing here to avoid the, those situation is submerging the plant once in a while in a low ppm water like a rain water for about an hour then put it on the shaded area until uh, maybe after uh, two to three days you can bring it back to this uh, original spot where you are uh, uh, located or you, where you put your uh, cephalotus beforehand and when you are uh, repatting or uh, propagating the cephalotus it's better if you uproot all the medium around the plant so that you can easily uh, tell where is the growth point and where should you cut or pull around so that, so that you can uh, get some propagation from the mother plant so what the technique that I'm using is uh, I'm looking on the the, un, the underside of the plants and try to look for uh, uh, dividing spot where you can easily pull 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 uh, uh, small propagation easily so it's better if you're getting some propagation you should have at least some uh, root system together with the uh, new propagation and also you don't forget to uh, to also to to make sure that there is a remaining uh, uh, root system for your mother plant because you don't want your mother plant to die after the propagation so we wanted to minim to minimize the damage from the mother plant and this is a very exciting uh, procedure where you can uh, multiply or uh, divide your plants from one plant to in this case more than uh, 10 almost 20 propagation just from two clumps of cephalotus pellicularis and uh, I just want to add to this uh, to these guides that this uh, kind of cultivar of Cephalotus pellicularis is uh, mm, 
products. Uh, it's uh, it called it is called Big Boy or Cephalotus Big Boy, and this is a very hardy Cephalotus compared to other uh, um, tissue cultured uh, Cephalotus that I have before. Where when you divide it or you when where, when you replant the, uh, the the specific plant that I have before Cephalotus uh, typical. It can easily turn yellow after repotting. It means it is very sensitive. From if you move the plant a little bit from repotting it to propagating it, and it will take uh, maybe more than three months before that plant will will uh, root. Sometimes even you you, uh, you uh, even you divide it after three months there is no still no roots but uh, foliage is still green but there's still no roots which, which means it's not very vigorous and i don't think you want to have those propagation where you propagate it but there is no uh, roots afterwards so because uh, soon enough it will die and you will lose your plants but in this case, this uh, Cephalotus pellicularis big boy, as you can see, it has a very nice root system compared to the other Cephalotus that we have before. If you watch the previous video about Cephalotus in this channel. So I, I recommend if you are a beginner and you want to start uh, uh, to care for a Cephalotus, I suggest don't start with the typical <laughs> start with the Cephalotus big boy they cost almost the same and uh, this uh, Cephalotus is it will be uh, it will be very beautiful in no time even you grow it indoor or you grow it outdoor I'm growing all my plants since the beginning outdoor the Cephalotus I, I, I think before I have a this thinking that it will not grow <laughs> It will just uh, maybe produce more features, but it will not. Uh, the feature will not uh, experience. Uh, we will not experience a feature uh, jump, so where it will produce bigger feature after some time. But in this case, even we're growing it in a low humidity environment, we're growing it in a very windy environment, and uh, it's outdoor. We don't do. Uh, fridge method where you put your cephalotus on the fridge at night to experience uh, temperature drop what we're just doing is just put it on the same spot uh, and don't uh, don't uh, move it or don't put it on a fridge it will stay uh, beautiful and it will you will experience uh, leaf jump in no time with this uh, kind of cultivar so that uh, so so that's why we recommend this uh, cultivar. It's very beautiful cultivar, and you will be happy to see your plant to when uh, they are producing bigger pe uh, feature for you to appreciate. And uh, if I didn't make this video, if you can, if you will notice on the first uh, part of the video where you can see the new feature. They are, uh, they are, they are big. No? Uh, they they are not on the what it, what we call that uh, smaller stage. They are on the getting bigger. They're producing bigger picture. So that's a good news for us uh, for those uh, <laughs> indoor and outdoor grower where you want to see a bigger feature cephaloto so this this is the one of the best uh, cultivar that we have and if you have some uh, cultivar that you are keeping right now that are easier to to cultivate propagate taking care of for uh, cephalotus uh, cultivar just uh, comment it on the comment section and maybe i will also try to acquire those kind of cultivar for us to add some uh, a variety here for the cephalotus because as of now we only have one cultivar aside from the typical one which which, which is uh, already uh, gone uh, uh, for about two, three, two to three weeks from uh, two three weeks now uh, it's 
that's why now we only have uh, this cultivar the Sepalotus big boy so oh uh, what else can we share to you about uh, taking care of, of these uh, plants I think you can also I can uh, it can it will also help if you will uh, put your uh, Sepalotus in a cooler place where it ha it will experience also uh, cooler temperature at night and uh, better humidity what we're doing here in the growing area we put some uh, semi highland setup where we put plastic around the area but it's not totally humid inside it only helps to lessen the air that coming to the growing area where the moisture can remain uh, longer and gives a little higher humidity and uh, I think it helps a lot for my plants and also I didn't need to water it more often so when I starting uh, what the setup that I'm using is a bird cage method I use a double cage uh, that I uh, yeah, that I use already before to where I, uh, I have a couple of uh, iron birds that I taking care of before now that I don't have a uh, collection of uh, birds I ring I use those those uh, old uh, cage bird cage which is uh, what we call here in the Philippines double cage and I only cover the double cage with uh, thick and sturdy plastic to for me to have a uh, higher humidity so it's it it uh, it serves it serves as a small uh, greenhouse for my plant and also protection from small critters like dog and, dog and cats and birds where if you are growing it outdoor so because uh, that's the problem if you're growing it outdoor the uh, the main problem is the birds and the rats they will try to eat your uh, precious uh, collection and we all know that uh, more uh, most of uh, caribou's plant are a little bit expensive than other plants so we need to protect this uh, beautiful baby and also try to uh, think outside the box how you will uh, uh, make that uh, set up uh, in a cooler uh, temperature what I did before is I put some uh, water container around that uh, cage and it serves as a cool, cooling system. It absorbs the heat around the uh, around the the cage, and also it serves a, li a little bit shade for for the plants. And also, I also put some non carnivorous plant around the cage so that it will experience more uh, humidity and cooler temperature, just like with what we have on the previous video about acclimation of Venus flytrap. So what else? So also, if you are refatting, it will be beneficial for you if you use Libus pagnum moss. We all know that in the wild, if there is some patches of uh, Libus pagnum moss, uh, most probably there is some uh, carnivorous plant around or, or on that patch of pagnum moss because in the wild, their natural uh, uh, their natural environment is around the sphagnum moss and they are planted on those or they are uh, naturally occurring on those uh, kind of environment which is bug set bug type environment so it is very useful if you have some live sphagnum moss propagation around where you can take some sphagnum moss heads and put it around the plant and it's also a good indication if you want to see if the setup is too dry because the sphagnum moss heads will go uh, will change in color it will turn uh, black if it is uh, uh, sunburned or it will turn white if it is uh, low humidity or it is uh, drying uh, up so it's a big help for me also if I, uh, I put uh, live sphagnum moss around my a carnivorous plants and it for me it gives me higher success rate when propagating especially for Venus fly trap as you know already and uh, what else 
and uh, uh, what uh, I have here in this uh, semi -humid, humid environment is I put a uh, blue drum where I can uh, store more than a hundred liters of rainwater and also it serves as uh, a natural uh, humidity uh, support for my plants because when uh, when the rain when the rain comes it will accumulate uh, rainwater and when the temperature is a little bit hot the the water on the drum will evaporate and it will keep my plants around humid so that's a little uh, tips uh, that i can give to you and also the flooring of our growing area is made up of uh, uh, what you call this cocoa peat because we have a lot of cocoa peat around the around the area that's why I, I use it to make some flooring on this uh, highland setup so that when uh, when I'm watering some of the water that didn't get to the pot or, and to the plants or, and it that, that uh, drifts on the uh, floor was absorbed by uh, spark, uh, cocoa peat so that when the uh, temperature are, uh, during the day is a little bit hot the water on the uh, on the me on the, the cocoa peat evaporates so it also gives the area more humidity before i uh, i did i'm not sure that it will uh, be effective but now that i have more time to stay on the growing growing area i really felt the indication that the area is humid and those uh, some small uh, small uh, setting in my growing area really helps and uh, uh, maybe soon enough uh, I will show you some of the effect that uh, this uh, higher humidity uh, benefit benefit benefited the setup that I have actually if uh if you still you're still listening now uh some update on my nepen test when i put it here they produce uh, uh a constant uh, growth of b cells i don't know and also they also producing uh, a very nice forming picture for the nepen test because it has a higher humidity and there is some uh, live sphagnumos also around that keep them always uh, cool and humid and moist and uh, i notice it on my ampullaria on my uh, beautiful hybrids of uh, lowy ex ventricosa and also from uh bloody mary they all, they all produce uh, basils and also for my veggie they produce also good uh, 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 inactive nodes and uh, they produce a beautiful picture for having a higher humidity setup so <laughs> i don't know if i <laughs> if i feel sorry that i only did the, the high humidity setup just now maybe i should uh, uh, done it earlier but I'm too fond on growing my carnivorous plant on low humidity and um, challenging uh, environment and uh, the, my uh, buyers and uh, people that supports my uh, Shopee page and my Facebook page and YouTube channel they really appreciate the plants that came from our uh, growing area because <laughs> when uh, they receive the plant it is a little bit easier for them to take care of the plants that uh, came from us because uh, it came from unforgiving environment and they put it on their best setup uh, air conditioned with humidifier with a beautiful setup of grow light mars hydro the plants really growing and jumping and very happy for uh, their new environment and uh, to hear some uh, positive uh, feedback from uh, those buyers really helps us to keep going 
And uh, actually, I have an update today. I ship one, uh, two Venus flytrap going to Mindanao today. Uh, I mean, not two weeks ago, and it only arrives today to the buyer. It took maybe 11 or 12 days or more. I, I, I didn't remember it, but it's more than 10 days. Believe it or not, it's still alive. <laughs> and it's it still has uh, some uh, traps and uh, I, soon enough if the person that receives it know how uh, know the technique that these plants if they are stressed out they will try to multiply that's the one of the thing that you need to remember when taking care of carnivorous plants especially being a supply trap if it is stress it will it will try to multiply and keep their uh, species alive so that uh, you will know that if the the plants that you receive is a little bit stressed because of long shipping don't uh, be don't be sad too uh, too much after few weeks you will notice that it will grow vigorously and beautifully in, in their new environment just make sure to practice the acclimation process that we're teaching on this page if you haven't seen it yet uh, it is on the playlist that we have uh, on the on the earlier video. If if it is in Tagalog, I think it's time to make for uh, to make an English version of it, and so that other uh, other uh, viewers also will benefit from those uh, technique for easy acclimation. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this video. And I think I will gonna pass forward this video if you will if you don't mind after some time and hopefully you learned something from this video and and I think you just need to uh, watch it until the end or if you like I will I can just keep talking and maybe you want to see the whole process on of repotting it so what else I can I add with this uh, video because uh, a friend also requested it to me to make an English version of it which is I, I, I really appreciate it if there's someone even one is watching and benefiting benefiting uh, there's a benefit for a per one person it means it will be also benefit uh, in the future uh, future uh, viewers so sorry for my <laughs> not too good English you know that I'm uh, not a natural uh, uh, English speaking uh, person I used to talk on Tagalog on most of my videos but uh, most of you guys suggested that I need to make a uh, English version of uh, those videos so that I'm so that's why I'm trying my best to make some uh, some of this video and tomorrow morning if i have more time i think i will make another uh uh fancy seeds uh, sowing guide so that uh we can plant some uh, nefanti seeds that we have here what we and also we're selling it online it is a natural cross of uh truncata and uh rob cantley yay i think that's a pronunciation or aka nebularium and uh, if you want to get some of those seeds you can go to my uh, shopee uh, account shopee store and you can purchase it and uh actually we're giving more than that to be posted there it only says 60 to 80 i think we're giving more than hundreds per uh per order because uh we want to dispose the seeds as soon as possible because we don't want to, to sell seeds more than a month old seeds if it will be more than a month we will not sell it we will just plant it in our own and replenish the stocks so hopefully guys you learned something from this video i will just kind of pass forward this and see you on the next video and thank you for watching god bless and bye bye
So after repotting it, I'm just uh, put. <laughs> I'll just put. I'm just putting more live sphagnum moss that uh, we have. We still have here. And then after this, you need to put it on a shaded area where you, it can receive only uh, morning and late afternoon sunlight, and preferably in a higher humidity area. And in my case, I put it uh, besides the blue drum that I told you earlier. And don't forget to water it thoroughly after repotting so that the medium will settle properly. But don't put it on a uh, water lag uh, setup so that it will not uh, rot. And if it is, uh, it is in a higher humidity and it's not on direct sunlight, I think it is it it has a higher chance of survival. So this is that's it, guys. You just need to water it thoroughly, just like uh, I have here. I have some uh, uh, rechargeable uh, sprayer or mister, where it it, oh, it gives a light mist effect on the plants, like a rain or pouring on the plants. And if they really appreciate this uh, uh, rechargeable sprayer and because some of the sprayer has a higher uh, pressure and it's harder to regulate but this kind of sprayer is really, it's really, it's, it, it, it's really good just make sure when you're buying it don't buy the manual because if, you're, if, you, if you have the manual it's, it's, it's harder to to water this small plants that you have I think the manual uh, sprayer is for the pesticides if you want to spray on the mangoes and some uh, rice I don't know I don't have any idea actually but uh, it's better if you have some rechargeable one it will give you uh, a very easy uh, experience when you water your plants and as you can see I just put it on a shaded area so thank you for watching guys I hope you learned something from this video and God bless bye bye see you on the next video